press, can you? Press record. <laughs> yeah, I, I have three times. Right, I've, <laughs> I've pressed record now. So it, it's up and Hello and welcome to um, this week. I, I'm a bit worried about Studley. He seems very quiet tonight. Right? Sorry, I was... Um, I was. Yeah, you better have a good excuse. Something else. I'm nearly there. Right, I'm there. Ooh. Oh, this sounds exciting. Uh, yeah, so hello and welcome to this. I was just this... stopping my porn downloading, so I didn't like it. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad because we don't want internet issues. Um, welcome to this week's thrilling adventure in the world of Shadowrun with these um, helpless individuals below me who are struggling at the moment to make ends meet in a cyberpunk work uh, world where um, magic is real um, the Matrix is a place where people l store information and where um, Studley is constantly um, pulling up his trousers. And talking about Studley, let me allow the players to introduce themselves. Um, so we're going to start, as always, down in the dark corner there with Mr. Chugga Wugga. Hello, I'm Chugga Wugga. I play um, Stanley Lovely. Um, who goes by the name of Studley on the streets? Um, he's a he's a he's a middle aged um, gentleman with receding hair and um, a rather large pot belly. So he's constantly having to pull his trousers up over onto his paunch, as um, in <laughs> just said. I wonder what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he lives at home with his mum. And um, his mom's ill, and to pay oh, um, for her medical expenses, he has decided to use his skills as a um, a magician, a sorcerer, a magic user um, to lot. aid the party, um, and also to aid his mother. Do you like yes. it? Not a lot, but you like that's, it. Um, that's studly. excellent. How, how old is your mother? This out of interest. 78. I just wondered if she died, that would be it. You would be free. Would you inherit the accommodation? No, because she's got no money. That's why I'm working. Oh, is it rented then? The accommodation? Oh, yes. All right. Cool. Mm. Excellent. And then sat below me is Longshank CPG. <coughs> Hi, guys. I'm Longshank CPG. Tonight I am playing Hector, the, the young elf um, adept who um, channels all his internal magic into uh, enhancing his skills um, and he's got things like combat sense um, um, pain resistance and all sorts of extra sort of like little little um, additions that make him a slightly better fighter Did you know that you say Hector and Hengis the same way mm -hmm. that's my accent <laughs> <laughs> I, what, like, like, no so he goes Hello, I'm Longshanks, and I'm tonight. I'm playing Hector. Oh, I and see. When he's I doing Nimbus. Um, <laughs> he goes, "Hi, I'm Longshanks, and tonight I'm playing Hengis." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting. You know, on Saturday, when you're playing Hengis, you'll have to say it a little bit different, just to sort of like yeah. add Hengis. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and Hengis. Down, mm. down at the bottom, in the other corner, in my right corner, we. <laughs> <laughs> in his polka dot leotard <laughs> like uh, we have um big beastie i am big beastie and i'm playing billy bob the orc uh tank of the group he is a uh, ex uh army of 15 years and uh yeah he's got a new helmet and he, he's quite um stashed up with cyberware isn't he if i remember oh. rightly he's got mm. i think he's is his bone Lace with oh, al aluminium. Is that right? Yes, is it al aluminium or is it aluminium? Aluminium. It depends where you come from. Aluminium's very. No, well, isn't, yeah, I suppose it is. Isn't aluminium just what the Americans call yeah. aluminium? Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're in the UK, so but that's can... not very. That's not very. Do you want strong, to know? I, is it? I was no. watching. Still metal. I was watching um, Raph inspired. Um, um, stream before I came here and it's in I'm always interested with words that Americans say different to us like um, tomato and <laughs> potato and I found another one um, apricot because we say apricot don't apricot. we yeah, they apricot. say Raf, Raf says apricot oh well that's maybe that's yeah, just American 
Yeah, but <laughs> but the, the more I was thinking about it, it is apricot, mm. isn't it? Because there's no magic e in there at all. No. You know, so so that's one of I the think. one of the other things that um, not a lot of people know about Billy Bob is that he actually uses used cyberware. So all his cyberware wasn't actually brand new. Oh bless! It was, it was <laughs> it's all, like a jumble. It, it. it was all second hand because that's all he could afford at the time. So it's a bit like a jumble set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His yeah, eyes have it. already been in somebody else. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> oh. I wonder if there's anything left of the original. And so is his, so is his dermal plating. That, that was actually... Oh, yes, because he's got dermal plating. Those are not real ab muscles you see before you. That is his yeah. dermal I'm plating. i on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing that if you if you tap them, if you tap your abs, they, they, they literally go clank, you know. And then that's, <laughs> that's it. Okay, so um, that's the, um, adventure, the adventuring group. And they do have another member of the party because you might have noticed that in their threesome, they have mage and then two combat people. So they're missing um, a decker and a rigger. And so they have um, a young lady called Athena um, who helps them out on the matrix and um, does um, surveillance now and again. And that's the other icon that you can see um, on the um, on the um, front page there. OK, so the party have had a really exciting adventure so far. They they were hired rather promptly by um, some rather posh people who lived in Northside, which is the top part of Metro, um, where all the, the rich people live in their very posh houses. And they were hired in order to um, find their daughter who had gone missing in the sense that they had, she had gone out for a weekend and the comlink had gone dead and she hadn't returned home. And so the party dropped what they were doing. And in Studley's um, case, that was his mum's feet and set off um, via tube of, uh, to they checked out the um the rich family's um, accommodation in Southside to start off with, where they found uh, various drugs, uh, sorry, um, Beatles, BTLs, and um, better than life um, drugs, and also hold of the cards and um, business cards for East Side, which is the entertainment area in um, Metro. They then um, went down to the tube and had um, some instances, uh, incidents, incidences in that tube um studley saved an old woman's life um i do believe um hector got heckled um by some um gang members who um hector got hecked heckled and billy bob sorted them out for us i always imagine it like so billy bob they're making fun of me can you sort them out <laughs> <laughs> and billy bob goes all right <laughs> <laughs> killed seven, um, uh, killed, um, stunned several of them, and then got really annoyed at the last one. And this, um, I think you hit him, did you? You didn't use your punched, hand. Punched him, yeah. yeah. I just punched him. Yeah, sorry, I just need a tissue. Um, bless you. Um, um, punched him, and then um, they got the tube stopped, and a rather big troll guy got on and started to ask Billy Bob for favours in the form of drugs. Nothing sexual. It did, it did stop in, in mid tunnel. Oh yes, in the no tunnel. Station. Yeah, yeah. And and then um, the the party quite easily dealt with the big troll. And then um, there was another guy on the on the tube who actually was carrying a briefcase. And while they, I think, Studley, you were going down there when suddenly a physical barrier appeared. Um, and Athena, the, the whole tube stopped. And you, oh, that, that was it. You had just gone through a, a train station, haven't you? That was all dark, which Studley noticed that that was very unusual. And then a physical barrier came up and um, Studley summoned mother, not his mother, his spirit mother, and to aid him in a power bolt spell, power ball spell, sorry, Studley, to try to blast his way through the physical barrier to no success. And while Billy Bob was dealing with two other people who had got on the um, the other side of the tube station, uh, the tube. And then um, this rather luscious woman sort of like waddled her way on while the guy with the um, suitcase was frantically trying to get rid of something that was so swarming round him. And she picked up the case and went out and they 
part, the barrier dropped and the party followed. And there was almost like this part of blackness that she disappeared into. It was then that Athena commented that there was some kind of device underneath the middle of the three carriages and they could see the light flashing. So they made a run for it. And just at the last moment, just when Billy Bob tried to protect Studley by putting his body um, in between the blast, the blast went off and the party were um, hit, not by the blast necessarily, but by the shockwave. Um, Studley being um, a middle-aged, rather portly man and not being that physical, um, took quite a bit of damage, I think. Eight physical. and mm. But I think you've healed yourself by magic since then. Um, I healed it down to three. Yeah, um, that's it. So you still got a wound penalty up. Um, Hector um, took four Several. physical, um, but because he's got... Uh, normally you take a penalty at three, um, but um, Hector has um, pain resistance as part of his thing, uh, which means he takes it at four rather than three. So he's at minus one. But the blast, the shockwave hit Billy Bob... I basically did nothing to him. They, they, he just sort of like went, oh, what was that? <laughs> it was like a small fly hitting his back. It was back. a breeze. Yeah, it was a small breeze. <laughs> and and this is where we pick up um, the party uh, and tonight's adventure. So, guys, before we start, is there anything that you would like to ask or say to me, not necessarily to do with the adventure, but just to about what's happened so far? Yeah, um, yeah, my wound modifiers, they don't affect me yet, do they? I've got two. Uh, no, it, no, wound, no wounds affect you until you have three in any case. But because you have pain resist, is it, is it stun damage? Uh, it's physical, too physical. Yeah, it won't affect you until you actually hit um, four. And yeah. that's what it is. So if you do get three wounds um, in the near future, just remember to put plus one onto your... Um, situation modifier to take that wound penalty off that's the easiest way to do it okay anything else guys before we start no nope. i think i'm okay okay um studley's pretty pretty beaten up i think you He's... should be able to see um all your tokens on this site now on the piece of paper yeah yeah Yep. Uh, can you just, and Billy Bob, can you just make sure you can move yours? Yeah, cool. Uh, that's it, because you've got your helmet on I there. couldn't see him for a second. I know, I know. <laughs> he, he's sort of like camouflaged now on, on the on the route. And I'm going to, I think I've given um, control of this suited man over to somebody. Did I do that? Yeah, not me. Not me. No. Okay, okay that, that's fine. Let, let me just let me just um, quickly um, um, hand him over. So you, so this this is just so um, you guys have actually got control. So I don't actually have to keep um, keep going in and moving him for you. You you guys can just sort of like um, move him um, where you would where you would like him to be. So I think you've probably all got um, option to move him now. Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so let's get let's get on with it. So just to recap, um, behind Hector to the east of the map, that is where the um, tube has exploded. Um, the darkness was a little way in front of you, but that has gone now. And in front, of, further down this tube track was where the um, you passed the station that was in darkness. Okay, off you go. What would you like to do, guys? Um, Billy Bob's on the corner, isn't he? Uh, it sort of like bends round, you said? It, it does, time? yeah, it does bend round, yeah. And the, the, the tube does... the, the um, it just sort of like continues round the bend at the moment. So you, you were quite a distance away from the um, blackout station because you remember Studley saw it and reported it to everybody and then the train kept going for some time. But we can all see each other clearly now. Well, I'm presuming that you've all got um, some form of low light um, vision 
um, on. If you remember, the suited guy actually has cyber eyes, which you figured out quite early on, Studley, when you sensed him. And so I think, um, Billy Bob, you have low light. Yes, yeah. Sir. I think um, Suited Man has um, cyber eyes. I think Hector will probably, unless he's replaced them, which is very unlikely, he'll have natural low light mm -hmm. because he's an elf. And Studley, I think you've got um, glasses. I've got low light built in, into his glasses, yeah. Yeah, into your glasses, that's right, yeah. So, so, so one, one Studley's cast his healing spell on himself and he's going to um, he's going to pull himself over to the, um, to the Suited Guy. Um, does he look injured? Yeah, he he looks like he's got a, quite a lot of cuts and bruises round round his face. Um, it looks more from falling onto the track um, rather than actually um, being um, attacked by anything. But you also do notice that you know he he's got quite a bit of um, material left in the back of his jacket, and you do notice that. I mean, he is alive. But you figure he's um, quite seriously injured at the at the moment. Do you have any form of um, first aid or anything like that? No, no, no. He's he's studly. He's just going to. Um, he's just going to have to risk a casting heal on him. All right. Yeah. So you're just going to um, heal as as usual. I think off the top of my head. Uh, have you got this spell written down? Um, I do. What you write? What down. what what you wrote? Yeah, I think it's um, body plus willpower. But for what? For heal. Um, oh no! Sorry, you're boxes. you're you're healing him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's how many successes I get? Yeah. So you're but, rolling your spell casting plus magic. Yeah, yeah, but the the thing is, and it's um, what's his. Um, what's his essence? Yeah, it's going to... Well, yeah, for people watching the stream, that's uh, maximum... Um, it's his normal essence, take away six, which is the maximum essence, which his, his normal essence is just five. So it's just going to be taken away. Um, it's going to be minus one to him. Okay. Um, please remember, you're also sustaining your own spell, are you not? No, I said I was going to wait until I'd done that. I thought that had been done at the end of the last adventure. Oh, right. So, um, so we, oh, yes, because it's, um, well, how long does it take? I, I think, I think it had to be six combat turns. I had to All right. Wait. Okay, then. So that's roughly what, um, um, how long is that combat turns? In this game, it's, is it six or five? Five or three? Five. No, it's three. Three. It's three, yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. That's just a matter of minutes, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, so go away. Um, go ahead. And then remember, you'll be rolling your logic plus um, willpower, isn't it, for your drain? Mm-hmm. Which I think will be rolling automatically. Oh, drain, right, so I've resisted the drain. And done and... five successes. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah, he, he sort of like starts to come round. You, you've done a really good heal there, and you notice that the the wound, the the little cuts on his on his face have sort of like healed up. So you you think you've um, probably um, um, healed quite a few boxes there. You figure he's probably roughly the, about the same as you now, Studley, okay. um, injury wise. Yeah, he just changed himself to Studley. It's currently saying Chuggerwugger. Oh, sorry, I, I clashed again. So. Okay, so um, Studley's going to say to him, uh, to just, um, just stay where you are until um, my, my magic has, has finished healing you. It will take a, a minute or so. Yeah, so that would be, what, five? So that would be um, 15 seconds, won't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you you guys sort of like hang around for um, fifteen seconds, and he sort of like um, sort of like um, rests quite um, gently um, on on the track, um, waiting for further instructions. Okay, so as soon as he's finished um, the the spell, um, Studley wants to switch his um, aura. He wants to switch his perception to the astral. Okay. Yeah. And he wants to see whether or not he can um, pick up the the um, 
the aura of the 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 spell, the the, the power that the the um, mate of a mage used to cast the spell, whether or not he can still see it lingering yeah. in the astral plane. So remember, your net hits will tell me how much information to to give you. Yeah. Just rolling now. Three successes. Um, yeah, three successes. So you can see that the the magic of the um, the darkness um, spell is is small, show, s slowly dra um, draining away. You, you do notice that there's some um, residual magic on him as well, as if he's been um, cloaked maybe in a spell um, or covered in a spell. But there's just patches of it um, here, there and everywhere. Um, Billy Bob and Hector are quite sort of like uptight about things, as you would imagine. And this guy's very much sort of like, he's almost a little bit despondent, um, as, as if he's almost like lost um, everything. The, okay, the, but the blast. can I make out maybe which direction she went or? Well, the the problem with that is that she she stepped through the darkness, and the darkness right. is the most powerful um, source at the moment. So, but you know that she came through the darkness. Um, so it would be in the direction of Billy Bob up to, up to the corner where Billy Bob is. Right. Okay. Okay. I think the best thing to do is just is carry on and try and get onto the nearest station or the nearest e um, maintenance exit and get out of this tunnel. Okay, Studley um, is going to drop his, um, he's going to drop his perception and he's going to, um, he's going to see whether or not he can get any um, communication signal to uh, Athena. Yeah, um, as you would imagine, um, being underground and, and off the tube, which of course has its own wireless, there, there's a lot of static at the moment, and it, it doesn't seem to be connecting at all. While you're on the tube, it has its own, it's, it's like a, a bus, it has its own Wi-Fi, so that's a lot um, easier to gain connection from, but once you come off it, then it starts to cause problems. So at the moment, you're just getting a whole load of um, static. What is the rating of your comlink, just out of interest? Um, dun, dun, dun. it is this one is uh, Renaku Sensei, so I think it's three. Um, I've got that one, Let's say, hang on, yeah, it is three. Three, cool. So that'll be um, six die. Yeah. Okay. Then. Yeah. Cool. So at the moment, you, you're just sort of like gaining static, and, and that's about it. Okay. Um, so Studley wants to get up, and he wants to start examining the um, examining the walls, and he's looking for any sign saying how far the closest exit is, or inspection hatch, or something like that. Because sometimes I, they'll have it on the. On this side of you know if anybody's doing maintenance yeah well well actually in this day and age um, things like that are not written down anymore they're they're normally um in ar and they're called arrows um a r o s um but pronounced arrows so that that's basically what what you see so anybody sort of like switching their senses or um looking on to you know uh, augmented reality you can see everything like that and you can see that the the, the nearest um station is actually the, towards the east, um, towards where um, Billy Bob was, which would be the station that was blacked out. And whenever you're in the underground, these arrows pop up and sort of like give you general um, distances to, to each location. And then the nearest one is actually bigger. Um, you can't actually see any um, maintenance directions, but you do figure. Um, just, um, just roll your logic and intuition. Uh, logic and intuition. Yeah, you you mm, figure. Yeah, don't forget I'm at minus two, which it, that it won't. I've, I rolled it rolled eleven dice. I should have rolled nine. Let me let me roll it again. Okay, minus two for your 
wound wound penalty. Yeah, I've so got two yeah, successes. two. So you you suddenly um, so that's two out of nine. So yeah, you you f suddenly um, figure out that really and truly, if anybody was on um, maintenance duty, it wouldn't be probably the thing that was would be on the the general public na network. It'll probably be on a different network that they can probably see rather than you know letting it out to uh, you know everybody um, how where all the maintenance things and Athena might be able to um, um, hack into it because she's currently in the host and so she might be able to find it but currently you can't actually um, get in touch with her okay can I can I make a memory check to see whether or not I remember how far apart the the tubes were at this time of night that would be traveling down this same line uh, yeah well might have seen something at the the um, the station that we got on you know sort of like given the the, the, the next. Uh, tell me, um, tell me why you want to know what time. I just need to know because why. we're we're heading in the direction of incoming tubes. Oh, I, I see what so you if mean. They're, if yeah. they're running every five minutes, it will mean that we've probably got three minutes to find. Yeah, an exit. I, 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 I take your point. Yeah, you they're they're probably about you know twenty thirty minutes apart. Remember, it's about three o'clock in the morning, so the tubes are not sort of like very frequent at the moment at all. And I mean, basically, you haven't seen one um, traveling down the line because, as you can see, and um, from where you are on the track, it's a it's a single track. So the the one that's going the other way is probably on the opposite side, uh, you know, over that sort of like yellow and black striped line. Um, so rather than having two tubes on the same track, but you you know from your your normal experience that tubes at this time of night are sort of like twenty minutes, thirty minutes apart. Okay, so Studley's going to stand up and he's going to, well, he's probably already stood up, but he's going to um, help the, the suited guy to his feet. And he's going to say, oh, we're, we're going to have to get um, moving and, and find an exit. Um, so we're, we're going to be heading um, towards my colleague, um, Mr. Bob's direction. Um, are you okay to, to travel? He sort, he sort of like he sort of like grunts as he, he gets to his feet and he sort of like looks around and he says, he says, I, I, I need to get my suitcase, my briefcase. Well, uh, um, at, at, at the moment, your um, briefcase is travelling in the same direction as um, we are going to be travelling in. Um, all I can say is that um, if we happen to come across it um, in our in our travels um, to get out of here, um, then we will, of course, um, do our best to retrieve it for you. It's imperative that I get that briefcase. At which point, Billy Bob's going to turn around and shout, we need to move. Bad things down here. Ah, oh, right. So it seems that, that we, we do need... Um, perhaps you could tell us more as we, um, as we travel. Okay, so um, I, I presume I'm just going to move you steadily, just so I can sort of like um, spread you out. So I presume is this roughly the the order that you're going to be um, heading down the tube? How you are at the moment? Yeah, I'm Studley's quite happy to walk with the guy and and give him what aid he can, but more to to chat to him. Okay, that that's cool. And Hector, you bring up the rear. Yeah, that I notice like that you have. I notice that you have one of your weapons out still. Yeah, he hasn't put it away since the train. That's fine. And what about you, Billy Bob? What do you have out? Um, I I've put my weapon away. Um, before I punch the. Uh... Okay, yeah, but you can take something. You can re-equip uh, now if you wish. Um, Billy Bob, yeah, I'll do that when the time comes, but um, Billy Bob just wants to uh, keep an eye out, make sure that, because he remembers them dog things that was down here last time. He doesn't oh, yes, know if, yeah. still, if they still live down here, so he, he's on the lookout for them or other other cool. badness that's about. Um, Studley's going to call Mother towards him, but keep her in Astral, so he's he summoned her, but he hasn't given her any any orders yet. Oh, excellent. Let's get her on. I know who she is. Um, da -ba -ba. I did think I knew who she was. That's Miko, isn't it? Hmm, yes. 
Uh, she's not coming up. Did you delete her? No. But... Oh, there she is. She's not that big, don't we? Okay, so we'll whack her into um, into astral for you. There you go. Do you do you have um, command over her? I do not. Okay, but it's okay. She doesn't do anything. Okay, she's just walking uh, alongside you. Then is yeah. that that the idea? Yeah, it's yeah. just so that I, if if how I do, many if services I do need does to... she have left? Not many. Um, she has two services out of her original six. Okay, cool. So um, as, as you sort of like move along, um, Billy Bob, the um, studly and the suited man um, walk, um, move a little bit slower than you do um, because obviously they're, they're still injured. Um, studly, is there anything you would like to ask the um, guy as you, as you go along? Um, yeah, so... Um Studley wants to sort of like say, All right, you, you say that um, recovering this um, briefcase is of the utmost importance. And, and when we were actually on the, the tube train, you you mentioned um, payment for, for helping um, he helping you to actually um, you know, keep it safe. Uh, why is it so important? Okay, yeah, roll, roll a, a suitable social skill that you um, have, depending on which one you want to do. So if you want to con him into um, making it or um, or intimidate him into doing it, then, then either one is absolutely fine. Is it mm. more um, con that you want to, or negotiation? No, I would have thought it was more negotiation because it's... Yeah, that, that's absolutely yeah. fine. I thought I'd think it would matter which one you will. No, I think they're all the same. They're all two with a situation modifier of um, minus two for my wound penalties, which, of course, brings up zero. Yeah. Okay, then. So, um, yeah, so your charisma is three, minus one for your negotiation. Yeah. Okay, then. So, yeah, he sort of like says, he sort of like turns to you and says, I just need the briefcase. It's so important what's in there. I need to get it and I need to retrieve it. There is money involved. Well, uh, maybe you should have used some of that money to um, hire protection um, rather than travelling by yourself on a tube in the middle of the night. Um, Billy Bob, you, you come to another corner um, in in the track. OK, it actually turns uh, you're traveling um, east um, at the moment and you can see that the core, the tunnel sort of like turns um, almost like 45 degrees. Eventually, it doesn't sort of like go eh, eh, like that because obviously the tube will fall off, but it's actually curving round that way. And as you you're about the 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 start of the corner is about um, here. Uh, where yeah. I have this ping and all of a sudden you see this incredible bright light um sort of like shine f from down it it's not a white light as a, it's not a tube train coming it's more of a fire light uh, as in um setting something on fire and you, you notice that so like down the the corridor the the remnants a little bit of wispy flames um come, come into existence okay um <clears throat> is is this coming at at Billy Bob, is it? No, like I said, it, it the the, COVID, the tube turns um, ahead. Um, oh. um, can you make um, um, perception rolls, please? Everybody, or just uh, Billy yes, Bob? yeah, everybody, everybody, be able to hear this. Well, yeah, it's more of the you can hear it. It's more the information that I want to give you about it. Oh, I got all excited then. I thought I'd done really well with my no, it's not. Too, and then <laughs> no. um, so, um, what what you hear? Um, there there seems to be the the sh the sound of um, gunfire um, coming from round the corner. Um, it, it's definitely sort of. It's not just one person going bang, bang, bang. There, there there's definitely um, more more than one um, person actually um, um, shooting. Uh, at which point Billy Bob's gonna turn around and say, 
shots, and he's going to pull out his uh, <laughs> uh, his pistol. Um, roll, roll your uh, military army knowledge skill, Billy Bob. Situation modifiers. There shouldn't be any. Uh, plus one for the wound penalty. Um, what's your wound at the moment? It's no. two. No. No, you don't have it. It's then. fine. Yeah, you, you you figure two things. Um, number one, um, it's automatic fire. Mm. And number two, it's not random. So it, it's quite um, focused fire. Right. Understood. Um, so, yeah, uh, Billy Bob's going to push for, try and push further on away from uh, the actual group, see if he can get a better look. So Hector and Studley and the guy, are you waiting here then? Um, Hector will have will have moved up a little bit. So from the back, he'd move up to just a few meters short of wherever Billy, well, the corner or wherever Billy Bob's going. So you you can move your character. Studley's going to say to the um, to the guy, um, the suited gentleman, he's going to say, "Um, are we um." We we best wait here where my colleagues um, check check this out. Okay, so um, and Billy and Bob... Studley wants to cast a spell as well. Okay, yeah. What what spell would you like to cast? He wants to cast cast clairvoyance. Okay, cool. So Billy Bob and Hector, you you get to the. Are you going right the way up to the corner? Yeah, Billy Bob's going to go right up to the corner and uh, have a look around, see what you can see. Yeah, Hector, yeah and Hector will um, stop shy of about two metres from Billy Bob. Okay, then. Um, so, um, Billy Bob, you can see this because obviously you're looking around the corner. And um, did you roll your spell, Stud? No, it wasn't. It now falls four. Uh, that's a lot so, of dice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, you resi resist the the drain uh, as well. Um, so, so, so four successes for my. Are you where you're putting your point? So it's 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 starting up, it's starting in front of me, and I'm moving it forward. Um, so it will it will I will basically see what Billy Bob's seeing, and then if needs be, I'll move it further forward. Okay then. So um, both Billy Bob and Studley, um, you can actually see this. So the the corridor turns round, and um, Studley, you figure it goes into the the dark station that you saw beforehand. However, it's it's not um, dark at all. It it's very well lit. And it's very, and there seems to be uh, quite a few guys um, stood around on the platform, etc. Um, very smart um, guys in black um, security outfits. Um, they seem to be the people who are firing the guns, and they they have just sort of like um, holstered their weapons. Is there anything on the tracks? No, not that you can see. Okay, can we tell which direction they were firing at? Um, not, not from, not from where you are. I mean, it. They just, they're just holstering their weapons now. Okay. Uh, uh, are they facing like towards uh, a certain direction, or are they just looking everywhere? They, they, they seem to be scanning the area now. Um, um, sort of like scanning around, but they they don't seem to. They seem to be more looking rather than um scanning with um pistols or anything like that. Are they all dressed the same? Y yes, from, from what I can see. Yes, most definitely. Okay. Um, can you um make um perception checks and um sorry um perception in intuition please. I don't know. I don't know what does perception normally have intuition attached to it. Perception yeah. is yes, yeah. yeah. Um, it needs to be capped with your mental. I don't know what it normally caps with, but it needs to be capped with your mental. I think it is capped yeah. with yeah. mental. Fantastic. Mental, and the yeah. only difference is um, Studley and Hector. Can you add plus two to your roll? Oh, we're okay. all rolling. Okay. Yeah. Everybody. At, at, at the moment, I'm um, I'm 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 using my side for the my clairvoyance spell. Um, yeah, you you still need to you still need so to. So will I take the minus two because I'm sustaining the spell? Um, 
you will have minus two plus two, so just knock it out. Yeah. Okay. So I got um, two successes on. Is that two out of eight? Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, two out of eight. Well, I've got eight dice as well. Okay, um, just one second. There you go. There you go. Okay. We both got messages on Discord. Okay, so um, Studley's immediately going to cancel his um, his um, clairvoyance. Um, spell because that that's that's currently being um, sustained. Okay, yeah, got you. Um, Hector's going to sort of like physically shiver, um, and if Studley's looking, he'll he'll see because it's a big shiver, so like like that sort of thing. Um, and he's going to say over um, over his sub vocal mic, "I've just had the weirdest feeling. Don't know what it is though. It felt like someone's." Walked across my grave. Studley's going to um, switch his um, his percept his perception into into the astral plane. Yeah, you you can imagine what what you can see. Um, just just out of interest. Here. You see. Yeah. What is it? What you? Oh right. Okay. And Billy Bob, you, you notice that um, these um, people in these um, black suits now um, are sort of like, um, they're, they're just sort of like looking aw looking around. They seem quite relaxed and they, they don't look like they're expecting trouble or, or anything. Um, Studly, you just notice that it disappears. It does sort of like a... Okay. Studley's going to say, that wrong to us. Billy Bob's going to turn around and look the other way, thinking that someone's coming the other way. Yeah, and as you turn around and look the other way, you, you notice out of your peripheral vision that you notice that these guys have um, drawn drawn their weapons um, again. And this almost like this booming voice. You, you think it's probably attached to some kind of loudspeaker. It might be cyberware. It might actually be mechanical. You're, you're, not, you're not too sure. It just sort of like... Um, it just sort of like booms out. It's not um, threatening in any way. It's quite relaxed. And it, it just comes out and says, Gentlemen and ladies, I suggest you come round into the open. Don't make us come and get you. The suited man turns to you, um, Studley, and says, Who is it? Well, I have no idea. Have, uh, do, do you have anybody helping you? You? They, they obviously haven't found the the woman yet because they told her to come round as well. Oh, this isn't going to end well. <clears throat> so, oh, uh, Billy Bob's got his pistol out. Um, do, we, do we go around or do we... Billy Bob's going to... Uh, shout out um, what you want. I would probably say they're also after the um, data um, disks. Uh, 
Yeah, you 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 hear the you hear the same the same voice um um booming round again that just sort of like says, please come round. Let's get this over and done with. Billy Bob's going to tell everyone to like push back, uh, back down, uh, the tunnel end. Um, he's he's going to try and get them to funnel funnel into his his field of uh, view so he can take shots. Take shots of them. Um, or... uh, how many was of them? Uh, from, from you could see there was say from your bit there there was probably that you could see about three or four, but the the amount of bullet the gunshots that you heard um, probably a lot more. Oh. Sorry, Billy Bob. Um, when you said you want them to funnel in to fire at you or to try to get as many of them into well, the. It... Uh, if they, if they're gonna come down after it, after no, it, oh. they're, they're not moving from the station. They're they're um, suggesting yeah. that you come to them. Yeah, they they, they, they did look pretty well trained, uh, Mister Bob. I don't I don't think they're just going to single file walk down a um, unlit corridor um, so that you can pop them up one by one. Um, I think we have I think we have two options available to us currently. The first option would be to do as they say and um, proceed down the corridor um, and see what they want. And the second um, option would be to um, proceed down the corridor. In <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so both of them involve proceeding down the corridor. <laughs> yeah. Well, taking into account that we probably have about 10 minutes before um, there's going to be a train Very true, Studley. Very true. Well done for keeping a track of the time, because I said... Sure. Wouldn't, wouldn't the, the, they cancel the trains, though? If there's been an incident on the rails, wouldn't, wouldn't all the tube station close down? They, they would, uh, apart from if you... Uh, there's a hacker in there in the system. Correct. Athena well done. said it last week. Okay. I think the best thing to do is is proceed down to the edge of the corridor and um, see if they've still got their guns out. If they've still got their guns out, then yeah, we go so, out with guns out but not shoot. Um, so Billy Bob's or... going to put his weapon away. Um, he's hmm. going to tell everyone to stay behind him and uh, he's going to start uh, walking round. I would, so, I would just like to just like to point out that we know that there are at least um, two mages in play currently. There is the woman that has the briefcase, and the um, the gentleman ahead of us also have a mage which has spotted us in astral. Yeah, um, I think the best thing to do in that case would be if it was to come to a fight. Identify the mages early and take them out as soon as possible. Um, and that H Hector says as he as he um, holsters his pistol, and then sort of like walks to the edge. He's not gone round yet, but he's walked to the edge, waiting for everyone. Okay, so so is the um, plan to um, walk round the edge? Yeah, Billy Bob's going to walk round. Uh, and what about everybody else? Yes, um, Studley's going to help the the guy around. He's going to try to keep at the at the back though. Um, uh, Billy Bob's going to inform them that we've got uh, we've got a wounded. He's not going to say how many, but he say we we've got. Uh, they already got, know that. Right. They they've sensed us in astral. Blah, 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 Billy, Bob blah, blah. Does, Billy Bob doesn't know that, so he, he's going to say we've got wounded, and. Uh, um, he's gonna have his hands up. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Let them know that we're not at full strength. <laughs> <laughs> and even that we've got no bullets either. <laughs> okay. No whole hog. We have no we have no weapons either. <laughs> so so you guys sort of like start sort of like um sheepishly sort of like walking down the corridor and uh the um tube tracks are and then you eventually come into the light of, of the station and you, you get to the station and as you walk down even though the other um 
the people in the tube um, station have their weapons draw. You you decide that you know that this is um, caution is probably the better side side of valor here, and you. Um, you do not um, draw your weapons as you get across. But as you get back in, this tube isn't here, by the way, it's just tracks, but it's just to give you an indication. Um, as you sort of like come around the corner and off the pla on the actual platform, um, you can see that um, there is um, a, a rather um, dead mage. Um, it's definitely the one that you saw in the, um, on, the, on the tube and you can see that she's got um several um bullet holes um in her um variety and um um billy bob just just roll your um your army for me this just be a normal roll three successes yeah three successes you 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 notice that a lot of them are very um, carefully placed, so you know she's got several sort of like in her, uh, some in her forehead. You notice that there's some in her chest. They haven't been um, shooting to take out arms and legs. They've been definitely um, shooting to um, take her down. You also notice that this guy, and I will put a blob on so you can see. This guy um, is carrying a briefcase, and you, um, Studley, you hear Mister o the the sorry the guy next to you say, "Shit." Uh, Are they? Uh, um, do they have any type of? Um, you said that they were dressed in sort of like black uniforms. Yes. Um, Is there any type of insignia on them? Yeah, I think uh, Billy Bob's got um, security companies. I think. Uh, I have a friend that is uh, in the security. Just one second. You, you actually have a knowledge skill called security companies. Just oh. underneath your army one. <laughs> but then yeah. underneath that you well have... Well hidden then. <laughs> then, yeah. then underneath that you have... Um, you police have, procedures. Uh, yeah, you have police, police procedures. procedures. Yeah. And origami is your last one. <laughs> yeah. So, isn't it a bit worrying that I know your skills better than you do? <laughs> so just um, just roll your um, security companies. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, another three. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Three out of six. Um, yeah. You. What was the? I don't know. First of all, it came up non. Now it's come up with. Zero and then two. It's normally a specialism. I'm wondering whether or not. Do you have your specialism ticked? Hang on, let me. He's rolled roll eight dice. Oh, specialize zero applied. It says yes. Should I just take that to no? Yeah, you're not specialized in it. No, right, okay. Situation modifies. Yeah, I know nothing. Okay, yeah, you, you, um, they, they look like some kind of security forces, but you, you do notice that, um, on their left lapel, <laughs> uh, left chest, they sort of like have, um, something that, um, some of you have seen before. It's like a, um, a white ghost. Damn. Um, with that, well, they could have been clans. <laughs> yeah, because no, yeah, it critically it's, glitched. It's a critical <laughs> glitch. Yeah. Do, do, you actually, do you actually see that? No, no but I, I always, it. if it ever comes up zero, I, I always go oh, right. over it to yeah, see. Yeah, because you, I, actually get, I actually get the warning that it's a critical glitch on my end. It comes straight to me from Glitcher. So I don't actually have to count it. So And so if it's a glitch or a critical glitch, it actually tells me, which, which is really nice, because otherwise I would have to keep um, going and, and checking it. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the guys um, turns around to, to you all and says, uh, oh, sorry, it seems to be um, this one. Um, I'll just ping him. Yeah. He yeah. seems to have various stripes um, on his uniform. 
and he sort of like looks looks at you all and you notice that he's got something round his um, throat as well. That may be some kind of amplification unit. And he sort of like turns around to you all and he sort of like scans um, through. And he, he, he looks at you, Billy Bob, and sort of like says, nice helmet. And then continues down the um, road and says, Mr. Ox, fancy meeting you here. Um, Mr. Ox, um, who is the person next to you, Studley, sort of like goes, listen, listen, I, I, I can explain. I can explain everything. I can explain everything. And the guy says, hmm, well, I think you will have your opportunity to do some explaining. Uh, Mr. Ox sort of like turns around and says, you, you sort of like notice Studley uh, that the colour drains from his face. And he says, he's not here, is he? And the guard says, oh, he definitely is, Mr. Ox. With situations of this importance, he likes to give the personal touch. And then he sort of... Studley like, turned around to Mr. Ox and say, uh, do you know these gentlemen? He sort of like looks at you and sort of like nods. And the, the guy turns to you, Studley, and says, Sorry, sir, I don't think there's any need for your spirit anymore. Oh, well, yes. From, from the way uh, they're all spaced out, um, have, um, have, they, have they been here for, like, a while waiting for this this mage to come out, or no, there's no so way you can, can't get so you can't get um, overlapping fields of fire on them. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's no way you would um, know that they they they're spaced out quite nicely, and yeah, they <laughs> uh, and they're, they're quite. Uh, hang on a minute, guys. Sorry. Okay, they 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 look. Um, they they don't look aggressive but they do look intent so you, you figure out that they they won't have any um any um qualms about um shooting anybody at the present moment in time can um, i think the um, other thing billy bob does as you measure things out um yeah oh, actually, sorry hector yeah um, Hector, I was just going to say, Hector wants to sort of like see how they're equipped. If they, if you can see what sort of weapons they're carrying, um, what sort of armor, uh, well, sort they, of things they're wearing. They, they seem to have um, heavy armor on. They seem to be armed with um, Ares Predators. Um, they also seem to have stun buttons with them. Um, well, Studley's going to dismiss um, Mother from the from the astral plane. She was cool. just there. And then he wants to switch his perception, see whether or not he. Sorry, can... did you want? To, did you want you? I think you said something to Mister Ox, and I missed it. Um, I asked whether or not um, he knew these people. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh yes, and his colour just drained from his um, face. Mm. Okay. Um, so the uh, the chief, uh, the not the guard with the briefcase, um, the 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 one who's been talking to you says. Um, gentlemen, now that the lady has left us, shall we make our way above ground? Uh, well, 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 why would... Why? why? Well, sir, there is somebody who wishes to make your acquaintance. Well, um, we, 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 is... are, we are pretty busy at the moment. Um, we're... Um, we are looking for a missing person. Um, I'm is sure. It important. Don't worry. This will not take long at all. Billy Bob's just going to walk off. Step over the body. Yeah, she's no. leaving quite a big um, pool of blood on the floor. Sorry, Hector. What did you want to say? No, it doesn't matter. It's the moment's passed. Okay. Um, Hector, Hector will um, also sort of like climb up the um, onto the platform, but he's going to yeah. walk around. The, the, the chief, the, sort of like the guard says, 
You have no need for your weapon. Have I still got it out? Sorry, I didn't have it out. I put Studley, it away. Studley will help up Mr. Ox, is it? Yeah, that's what they appear to be um, calling him. He sort of like looks quite... Um, um, he almost like has come to terms that this is going to happen. And he sort of like is rather forlorn uh, as they sort of like work. He's sort of like... <sighs> you can hear him Studley muttering to himself. He's sort of like saying... I knew this was going to happen. I just really knew this was going to happen, etc., etc. Okay, so the um, you you notice that as you start going through the um, underground station, um, you suddenly realise that it was a very wise decision not to cause any sort of aggro at this point, because there's numerous security guards from the company, um, not only on this level but also going further up the levels as well um right the way up um, to the top level and then when you are when you arrive you use you notice that uh, out on the road that they're, they're even out sort of like um guarding the street you know so guarding the entrance um to the um to the underground station you notice that it's you're still in north side as anybody in AR, your um, or the arrows pop up, um, telling you that you're you're still in north side, um, so you haven't quite got into um, um, east side. You also notice that there's several um, Aries Roadmasters parked down the cor down the street, um, which you figure is probably the transport um, for the um, com for these um, company for these company guys, um, but also parked um, um, a little bit down the road, but not completely away from the road. Uh, from the entrance is rather a large um, limousine. It's very black, it's very sleek, it's very swish. And the, the company man sort of like um, takes you down there and opens um, the door and uh, Mr. Ox sort of like um, climbs in and the security guard just says, gentlemen. Hexa will um, climb into the back of the van, doesn't have much choice really. Studley will sort of like look at the, the person that said gentleman and said, and say, yes, how can I help? Oh, please. There's, um, just hop into the car. Are, are you going to east side? You'll find out sooner or later. Well, I, I, I mean, my, my mother has, has said on numerous occasions that I, I shouldn't really get into cars with strangers. Um, who's inside? Sorry, sir. I'm not at liberty to tell you that. Studley will have a peek in. Yeah, you sort of like... Um, I'm sorry, uh, Billy Bob. Um, Hector's in the car. Mr Ox is in the car. Billy Bob, what are you doing? Um, I'm just stood there waiting for... Um, uh, Delay in action. Yeah, <laughs> delayed in action. Um, Studley to see, see if he gets in. Yeah, Studley, it's like the inside of some kind of limousine. How, how many... I can see Hector and I can see Mr Ox. Can I see anybody else? Yeah, there's definitely somebody else sat in the... Um, in the back. Studley is say, hello? <laughs> the security guard sounds a little bit impatient now and says, gentlemen, we're waiting to leave. Please... Enter the vehicle. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, oh, Studley, get in. <laughs> Billy Bob climbs in. Okay, so you, you feel the um, vehicle sort of like slide off. And in the far corner, um, there appears to be um, a man. He's very smartly dressed. He's the the light seems to be coming from behind him, so it's lighting you guys up rather than letting you see his face. 
Um, he seems to be very calm. He seems to be um, very quiet. And um, one of the other guards uh, has popped the briefcase in and given it to him. And he's, and he's got it on his um, lap. And the, the limousine sort of like pulls away. And as it pulls away, you all hear an audible as you hear the doors lock. You have heard it before um, when you when Wheels was um, taking you away around. And he sort of like um, sets off. And this, this limousine is the most, um, it's really comfortable. It's really smart. It's really smooth because uh, Billy Bob's still got his helmet on. So it looks like he's just sort of like, mm, you know, he's sort of like um, trying desperately to see out, etc. And Mr. Ox sort of like says, C can I just say? And the guy just sort of like holds it, his hand up and says, welcome, gentlemen. He oh, says, thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to start off by saying that um, if I was you, I would probably consider hiring a better security detail as they have let three people into the car who are fully armed with yourself, um, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would you want to shoot me? Mr. Well, Sudley. Um, I mean, we, we, we don't want to shoot you, but all, all I'm saying that um, if they were actually doing their jobs properly, they would have probably disarmed us um, before letting us into your um, presence. Well, you may consider doing your job properly and see whether or not you can do your job properly rather than criticising my own security guards. Fancy getting yeah. into a car. Yes. A bit, Mr. Billy Bob, I think it is. Yes, sir. Yes. I've seen your army record quite impressive in places. Sorry about the unfortunate incident you had. And Mr. Hector. Yes, sir. Western expertise. Quite unusual in this day and age. Yes, well, it's interesting. Of course, gentlemen, you all know who I am. <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> yes. yes, Mr. You Billy are. Bob, you are completely correct. I have been watching you for quite a while, and I do think our paths have crossed on several occasions. My name is Casper. You might mm. be familiar with my club. I do believe at one point, uh, Mr. Billy Bob, you were talking to one of my cooks or one of my kitchen staff. Very interesting. But Billy Bob's trying to rack his head back. It you was. It was uh, last adventure, uh, big. Last adventure? No, it was Missing Margot. Well, if you remember um, Margot, um, uh, you tracked down his, her brother and her brother worked at the Casper place right. and that's when you went to talk to him we met him in the um, that's right we met him in the park didn't yeah. we in the park I'm very impressed you know not only are you doing your own um, interesting exploits but you're managing to actually help me with mine as well and he sort of like drums his fingers on the top of the um, briefcase and mr ox says um, casper i can accept he just sort of like holds his hand up mr ox relax i'm not angry or cross with you at all not one little bit i'm sure you did your utmost to bring this to me. So, um, really, when we tried to help Mr. Ox um, protect the briefcase, we were we were helping, we were helping you. Well, Mr. Studley, there is an ounce of logic inside you, is as, there, as um, well is as there several payment involved, rather than <laughs> as well as several what appears to be large pies. Yes. Well, you know what they say. A balanced diet is a pie in each hand. 
definitely balanced maybe in the let's not go into that so gentlemen i would like to thank you for um trying to help my courier here um any idea what's in the briefcase gentlemen yes data chips pie yeah data chips mr sudley your pies are obviously improving your gray matter somewhat he sort of like um, lifts up the briefcase and you notice there's some kind of combination lock on, on it. And he sort of like, he tilts it over to um, Mr. Um, Ox and he says, Mr. Ox, would you? And Mr. Ox sort of like types in some numbers and he clicks open. And you notice that there's a whole load of um, data chips um, in there, quite significant amount. And they're sort of like um, set in like a foam. So it's like the, the bottom of the case is foam and they're all set in there. And uh, you can see from the light that there's a bit of glint of gold. So they're, they're not sort of like cheapo um, data chips. They look like they're quite um, significant and um, well produced. And what do you think may be on these data chips? Oh, I mean, if... if... If I was um, to actually have to hazard a guess, I would probably say it was um, information that you maybe have on um, your clients who come into your establishments that you can probably use to blackmail them. Oh, Mr. Studley, I am hurt. I am really hurt and shocked to think that you consider me that kind of person who would stoop so low to blackmail my clients. Can I make a judge intention? Yeah, by all it? means. Do you want to blind roll it, Tony? Oh, so do you want me to roll it again and B yeah. roll it? I would B roll it to me because then you don't know whether or not um, you were successful or not. And then. Um, what am I doing? Just so, intention. Exclamation um, mark, B roll, and then what is it? Seven and um, um, five D six, five D six greater than five. Uh, B roll, five D six greater than five. Um, I'm at minus two though, so it's only three D six. What's your minus got... two for? Rude modifiers. No, it's seven altogether. All oh, right, sorry. So minus two is a five. I'm sorry, what was your... Oh, yes, um, he, he seems to be telling the truth. Okay. Seems to be completely telling the truth. Okay. I forget what he's just said, sorry. Oh, um, yes, I would he not... Was, he was a bit I would insulted. not dare. How dare you, Mr. Studley? Mr. Hector, being of a Western... Um, um, background surely you know what's in the case it's it's either um money or um informa information on, on businesses or something like that right. well Unfold. money data chips and money perhaps not but is it, um, is it old films unfortunately not mr studley oh. it is indeed data for one of my rivals, shall we say, that kindly Mr. Ox extracted for me and was bringing to my establishment on East Side when he was somewhat intercepted, not by your humble selves, but by another group, which I think, Mr. Billy Bob, you dealt with some of them quite. He sort of like looks down at your hands. Um, where your um, where your hand blade would sort of like um, come out of, and he sort of like looks at it directly, and he sort of says, efficiently. Billy Bob's going to turn around and say, "You're welcome." Mister Studley mentioned beforehand about payment. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean although. Um we um, we did agree to help Mr. Ox, but that was on the spur of the moment, and he did mention that we would be um, rewarded for um, such such actions. But um, 
It doesn't seem that Mr. Ox is all that pleased to um, uh, for you to have the 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 data the data chip. Um, he, he sort of like leans over slightly to you, Studley, and he comes out of the light, and you see that he's wearing almost like mirrored sunglasses and he definitely has pointy ears um, suggesting that he's some kind of metahuman and he comes really close uh, to you and he says Mr Ox is not pleased to see me because I do not suffer fools gladly if you get no. my meaning no. and Hector you notice that uh, Mr um, Ox next to you is sweating somewhat um, uh, because uh, Casper hasn't made any attempt to sort of like say this quietly, he's he <laughs> said it as sort of like out loud. Right. Well, I, I would just like to say that um, the attack on the tube um, against Mister Ox, um, what was was um, was well planned and well executed, and I think that if it wasn't for uh, myself mainly and my colleague, then we would have been. Um, I, I think you would have lost those those data chips. Oh, no doubt. I completely underestimated. I think Mister Ox will um, will agree on that point. Oh my, Mister Sidley, I do believe you're standing up for Mister Ox. Mr. Ox, you have a supporter. Mr. Ox sort of like says, well, well, Casper, I, I was going to... And Casper just sort of like holds his hand up. And you notice that he's got black, um, almost like um, leather gloves on. And Hector, you realise that they are leather because your allergy is mm. not been set off at all. And it's fine quality gloves. And he sort of like holds his hand up like that and Mr. Ox sort of like falls silent. I take your point, Mr. Studley. I see that things are maybe not completely as I saw. Well, I'm, I'm just um, I'm just letting you know um, what 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 happened um, so that you can better judge the um, the outcome of. What happens next? Well, that is exactly what I would like to talk to you three about. Because it would seem I have some positions open. And I was wondering whether or not you would like to start to work for me. You know, you have such limited resources at the moment. And I have such expansive um, opportunities for you. Um, I mean, that is a very kind offer, but um, I do. Oh, Mister Studley, please, please do not feel that you have to um, answer the question now. Let me let me demonstrate my generosity. And he presses a little button um, down by his side and it's a little um, sort of like compartment flicks open and he sort of like takes out um, three thumb sized little chips and sort of like puts them on his um, on his gloved hand and just sort of like holds them out for you to take. Do, do you guys recognize what they are? Uh, Hector definitely does. They're um, cred sticks of some sort. Yeah, they're certified cred sticks. So basically, the the money on this um, is totally transferable. There's no um, there's no leak. You never know where it's come from. You never know where it's going. It's totally on. It's a bit like somebody's just put ten pounds. No, oh, they're like a they're like a cylinder thing then. No, no, they're that's... they're like a, a data chip reader, and they're oh, about right. they're about the size of your thumbnail, and they just go into a data chip reader. So you will have a data chip reader on your com links, and they can mm -hmm. just be in inserted into that, and then it automatically gives you the money, and then you can just transfer oh. it immediately to your account. Like a um, SIM card or a yeah, um, SD card. exactly. But these are certified, so the money is on them already. So it's like somebody has taken it from their bank. 
and put it on the card. So it's a bit like a gift card. I, yeah. It's preloaded mm. now. So when you actually get this, there there is no way at all you would be able to... Well, it is fabled that um, very experienced hackers can do it. Um, but there's no way that it could be traced back to where yeah, that he money... He went away in a submarine. Yeah, phase yeah um mm -hmm. where where these um these data chips um these um certified cred sticks um actually came from he sort of like holds it holds it out for you studley's going to reach out and take them yeah oh uh, he sort um, of like he sort of like says it's one each studley oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hector will um oh, do you know do you know when you do you know when you look at stuff to try to work out which is the best? <laughs> Studley's gonna do that for a second as if to work out, you know, which is bigger or you know, yeah. which might have the most on and then he's gonna keep one and he's gonna put the other two back on his hand. Well, um, well no, one one Billy Bob's uh, uh one um Studley's uh looking at um Billy Bob's gonna reach over and just Pick one out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hector will will take the take the last one and say, um, "Thank you very much, Casper." So is this, um, but I hope this isn't. I hope that this payment is a, a no strings attached. Oh, payment. He sort of like holds up his uh, hands and say, "Mr. Hector, you insult me. You insult me to even think that I will be doing something like that. This is payment for helping my courier." And shall we say, an incentive, maybe, well, maybe to um, join forces. Yet. Well, in that case, in that case, Casper, um, I, uh, you have my deepest thanks. Um, and Hex will get his common account and put it in. He's not going to transfer any money over. He just wants to see how much is on the credit stick. Yeah, it, it shows. Sure, you click it in. It automatically comes up with the contents of the um, credit stick. Um, certified credit stick. Um, there's a grand total of 5,000 credits on it. And there's also um, a com link number. And Casper sees you doing it and he says, the number's mine, by the way. Well, um, I do, I do take you. it that um, this is no, no strings attached. Mr. Studley. <laughs> Mr. Studley. I am hurt. I invite you into my gorgeous limousine. I let you sit on it despite having several areas of your body that looks quite frankly damaged, <laughs> risking that you might leak whatever <laughs> substance you have inside your body onto my rather fine seating, and you insult me. Now, Mr. Um, Studley. Uh, can, can, I, can I just say that, one, um, I didn't really have a choice of getting in the limousine. Your um, security guards, although lacking in taking um, weapons off us, were very insistent that um, I got in. And unfortunately, my, um, my current um, body wounds are due to um, us assisting Mr. Ox in um, keeping um, your merchandise safe. Mr. Studley, I would like to give you some advice. How you have come to be so old and alive is quite remarkable. The shadows are a very dangerous world, and I suggest that you be very careful who you talk to in certain tones and how you talk to them. Because some people have somewhat more power in the shadows than others. I understand that you are somewhat developing runner in this situation. But you do have certain points of contact that could be exploited. And I suggest that you bear that in mind. The car, the limousine, sort of like comes to a halt uh, rather abruptly. And it, you don't sort of like fall off your seats or something. And you notice that the door, Billy Bob, next to you is, clicks open. And well, it just clicks. And you know it almost like unlocks. And he says, gentlemen, um, you have my number. I give you that money for your own. Um, part 
in this last um, escapade. And please remember, I am more than willing to share my somewhat expansive finance with you further. I tend to pay slightly over the odds for a job well done, if you get my meaning. I look forward to seeing you all at some point again. And Billy Bob, you notice that the door opens as mm. if one of the roadmasters has parked somewhere else and a security guard has come up and just sort of like um, opened the door, you know, almost like a footman <laughs> to, to sort of like um, get out. And be before you before you do anything, um, Casper turns around to you and says, oh, since you were unaware, they are data chips with important information from my somewhat rival, Yang Industries. And then she, he's not going to say anything to him. He's just going to get out the... Well, he, out. he actually sits there and says, um, d d b before you actually get out, but on the way out, yeah, he just turns to you all and says, we are done. Um, thank, you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Casper. Um, and thank you for the ride as well. Um, and then Axel will duck out of the car as well. Or limo. Billy Bob's going to nod and thank you, sir, in uh, exit, stage left. That's right if I hack to move. Yeah. Sorry. And then um, Mr. Ox goes to get up and, and Casper says, oh, no, Mr. Ox, we haven't finished our business yet. And the guy shuts the door. And you notice that the convoy of the roadmasters and the limousines sort of like head off um, into the sort of like um, the, the rest of um, north side and heading to, towards east side. Well, actually, you actually find now from the arrows that you're actually inside. He's in east side. He's taken you on this small amount of journey from north side into east side. And you can tell now that you are actually in the entertainment district of um, east side and there's a variety of clubs and nightclubs um you know almost like some of them are closed now due to the time of night but many of them are up and still about and there's a few people walking around most of them are staggering in in various sort of like states of either drugness or disarray high on either um, beetles or or some kind of drugs or toxins uh, as as they go along and the the convoy sort of like um drives uh, drives off and as as you drive off um you you notice that your com link suddenly come to life and uh, up to this point um they they seem to be working um but not um coming to life at all and just as you drive off um you as the convoy drives off your com links come to life and you notice that there's um, a, a message from Athena um, um, clicking away saying, contact me, contact me, contact me. Um, as soon as Hector sees that, he'll, um, he'll open a, a, um, a, a group phone call. So between the three of us and Athena. Yeah, or she, he'll make a phone call and then invite Studley and Billy Bob. She says, she says guys, where you been? Um, yeah, we had we had a uh, slight hiccup on the on the underground train. Um, we somehow managed to get involved in a, a, a um, with another uh, with another group of people. And long story short, the train was blown up, and we were we've just had a lovely chat with chat with a lovely chap called Casper. Oh, she says, your comlinks went dead. I thought I had lost you. In the, not as in the Hansel and Gretel type in a forest, more lost you, as in... Well, to be honest with you, I came pretty close. As in, <laughs> as in you were sort of like um, lost as in dead? Yes, I came pretty close. Good. Well, a train exploding in the underground, yeah, it was... Um, I think only Billy Bob was... Was the only person who escaped from that without even a, a, a fleck of dust on him. That's what tanks are made of. Anyway, guys, uh, I've got some information for you. I had a message from the parents of the daughter that you're following, 
or trying to locate. Apparently her comm link came to life for one moment. They gave me a mark on it so I could actually snoop it. And I've got a location just before it went dead again. That's brilliant. Um, would you be able to send us a location so we could head over there? Yeah, it's, it's in an Eastside club, a 24-7 club. Never stops. It's called Sinner's Retreat. It's quite a upmarket club. And she sort of like pauses for a while. She says, you might want to get something suitable for you yourself to wear. Oh. Um, Hector looks down at his, his rather grubby sort of suit trousers and waistcoat and sort of like just brushes a little bit of dust off and then goes, um, yeah, and then looks at Billy Bob wearing his helmet. Yes, mo most maybe. Uh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> okay, let, it's half past eight, guys, so let's have our break there. Let's have a quick 10 minute break and then we will come back um, straight after that. So if. Um, so go and get a go and grab have a bio break and get something to eat or whatever and we will be back in 10 minutes so don't go away. Mm -hmm. 